300 Filipino seafarers stranded in Odessa. DFA repatriates 21 Filipino crew. PCG's largest vessel arrives. Abu sign in as new commandant. DOTR to inaugurate 13 port projects. Welcome to Marine World Weekend. Maritime is second nature to us. Sharing what's now and what's next. I am Dean Bakani. Around 200 Filipino seafarers on board merchant vessels are stranded in Odessa, Ukraine's seaport hub located in the southwest of the country on the northwestern shore of the Black Sea. The Department of Foreign Affairs, or DFA, confirms the report came from the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, or POEA, the agency closely coordinating with the seafarers' manning agencies. Philippine Ambassador to Budapest, Frank Simafranca, says they have already identified seven vessels in the area manned by the Filipino crew. This week, two vessels with Filipino crew were hit by missiles. The Japanese-owned cargo ship MV Namura Queen, which has already docked in Turkey, and its 22 Filipino crew are to be repatriated soon. And the Turkish-owned bulk carrier Yasa Jupiter, with 11 Filipino crew on board. The ship has resumed its voyage after sustaining slight damage. Ambassador Simafranca stressed that the assistance to the seafarers who are stranded in Ukraine ports should be properly coordinated with the manning agents in Manila and the ship owners. Well, uh, yung uh, mga kababayan natin, mga seafarers, no, uh, who are in various uh, vessels that are now stranded in Ukraine, no, iba-ibang mga ports yun, no, uh, meron sa Odessa, meron sa uh, Chornomorsky, Chornomorsk, pero uh, sa Yuzne, meron sa ne, uh, ne, uh, Nera, uh, Nera Port, no? Nera Terra, Neca Terra, Neca Terra Port, uh, and Nikolaid, no? uh, yung Neca Terra is also near the uh, city of Nikolaid, no? so uh, marami yan, no? uh, I think uh, si Kwan, si uh, Yusek Olalia is right no that uh, there are about uh, 200 no uh, Filipino seafarers uh, in in these uh, vessels we have identified uh, uh, identified already as much as seven seven of these uh, vessels no na na medyo may somehow uh, kumontak sa atin no pero yung iba yung iba naman yung mga kamag-anak ang kumontak sa atin no so uh, in any case uh, we are aware we are aware of their presence however uh, alam mo yung mga kababayan natin na seafarers hindi naman basta-bastang uh, nakakaalis sa barko yan no? uh, especially many of these uh, vessels are uh, full Filipino crew no? so lahat ng crew members are Filipinos including the master no? the captain of the vessel and uh, Alam mo yung mga, mga, mga vessels na yan, especially the captain, they cannot just simply abandon the vessel. No? Uh, in fact, uh, during wartime, di ba, if you remember, yung mga kapitan ng barko, pag, lubog, pag lumubog na yung barko, kasama yung kapitan. No? So they never abandon the vessels. So, so uh, but of course, uh, these are commercial vessels. No? These are merchant vessels. So as long as uh, the vessels are not under attack, or uh, the lives of our seafarers are not in imminent danger, then I think, uh, you know, it's best for them to take put the vessel. And uh, also, of course, uh, provided that they have uh, still uh, enough provisions, no? Meron pa silang pagkain, no? So that's why uh, it's safer uh, right now, especially in uh, the areas where there's ongoing fighting, no? Uh, they should just stay put in the vessel. I think they, they are better off and safer in, in the vessels. But then, uh, uh, as uh, Consul Gaina has uh, told me, uh, if uh, there will be uh, uh, a subsiding of the fighting, uh, 
pag mag-subside yung uh, fighting or if a uh, humanitarian corridor is uh, provided no? uh, for the safe evacuation of civilians, then uh, he can plan you know, the evacuation of these uh, seafarers if needed, if needed. As I've said, uh, this has to be properly coordinated with the, with the manning agency in Manila. No? And the, uh, of course, the, the manning agency will also coordinate with the principal, no? meaning to say this, the ship owners. The Department of Foreign Affairs has been facilitating the repatriation of 21 Filipino seafarers of bulk carrier MVS Breeze who were evacuated from Sharnamost, Ukraine. Philippine Ambassador to Budapest Frank Simafranca says the seafarers have scheduled flight this Sunday and are expected to arrive in Manila on Tuesday, March 8. The bulk carrier, manned by all Filipino crew, has been in dry dock for repairs at a shipyard in the port of Odessa since January 27. The seafarers requested repatriation due to the worsening conflict. Philippine Honorary Consul in Moldova, Victor Gaina, personally assisted the seafarers. At first, he was able to extract only eight of the crew. Thirteen of them, including the master, refused to abandon the ship, but after coordinating and getting the go signal from the ship owner and crewing agency, they expressed intention to be repatriated. Gaina went back to the port and was able to evacuate the remaining crew amid the heavy fighting in the area. In the official Facebook page of the Honorary Consulate of the Philippines in the Republic of Moldova, Gaina assures help for the Filipino citizens coming the from Ukraine. In Ukraine. I would like to point that the consulate is open 24 on 24. Uh, our telephone hotline is always uh, open and we are ready to take care of the people of the Philippines which are coming from the Ukraine to Moldova. The entrance in Moldova is visa-free. Below, it's attached a list of the frontiers that are open for the entrance. Passengers transfer from the Ukrainian Mold Moldova frontier is possible too. Please check our website and the telephone number, uh, email address, uh, social media, and don't hesitate to contact us. We wish you all the patience and a lot of help. All the best. Sincere yours, Consul. Victor Gaina. Thank you so much. The Philippine Coast Guard, or PCG's largest vessel, Barco ng Republika ng Pilipinas, or BRP Teresa Magbanwa, is set to patrol the West Philippine Sea, Benham Rice, and the southern part of Mindanao. The 97-meter multi-role response vessel MRRV-9701 arrived in Manila last week. With a maximum speed of not less than 24 knots, an endurance of not less than 4,000 nautical miles, the vessel will perform maritime missions against sea piracy and poachers and will conduct marine environmental protection in the country. BRP Teresa Magbanwa is the first of two 97-meter vessel projects financed by the Japanese government under Phase 2 of the Maritime Safety Capability Improvement Project, or MSCIP, a Japanese-assisted project funded by an Official Development Assistance, or ODA, loan from the Japan International Cooperation Agency, or JICA. The second vessel, MRRV-9702, is expected to arrive in May to further expand PCG's maritime security and safety capabilities. Meanwhile, aboard BRP Teresa Magbanwa, Vice Admiral Artemio Abu took his oath as the 29th Commandant of the Philippine Coast Guard. Abu, a member of the Philippine Military Academy, or PMA class of 1992, served as the commander of the Maritime Safety Services Command, or MSSC, and the Task Force Commander of the PCG Task Force Kaligtasan sa Karagatan. He was designated as the commander of the PCG Task Force Taal during the volcano's eruption in 2020. 
Abu earned the most coveted command at sea badge, while all PCG units he commanded received the distinction as best unit of the year at the national level. He received the Distinguished Cavalier Awardee for 2021 in the field of Coast Guard Operation, the highest recognition given to PMA alumni for their outstanding achievements in the field of government service. 13 port projects will soon be inaugurated, says Transportation Secretary Arthur Togade. In a recent cabinet meeting, Tugade reported that the 13 ports are in addition to the more than 400 port projects completed during the Duterte administration. The ports are located in Visayas and Mindanao, including ports of Curimao in Ilocos Norte, Bulan in Sorsogon, Legaspi and Tabaco in Albay, Basiao Port in Capiz, Banago in Negros Occidental, Baybay and Palompon in Leyte, Ozamis Port in Misamis Occidental, Sultan Naga de Maporo in Lanao del Norte, Port of Mati in Davao Oriental, and Ports of the Pitan and Sindangan in Zamwanga del Norte. Tugade said there are two more priority projects for completion this March, the Port of Batangas New Passenger Terminal Building or PTB, which will accommodate 3,616 passengers, and the Calapan Port's New PTB with 3,500 passenger capacity. Tugade explains the importance of ports development in archipelagic Philippines. Meron na naman po tayo mga natapos na mga port projects, total of 13. Handa na hong ma-inaugurate ito. Anytime I'm formulating this schedule now. Why is port important? Because the port, uh, ports are important because it provides the connectivity in the Philippines. Mas mura ho yan kesa mga airport. Mas mabilis ho yan kesa mga tulay. Uh, at higit sa lahat, tayo ho archipelago. Tayo ho is a maritime ship evers nation. Kaya yung mga puerto itinatayo Karagdagan ho ito sa mga natapos ng more than 400 ports during your term, Mr. President. Thank you for watching Marine World Weekend. Stay on board. Subscribe to Marine World Online for more meaningful maritime news and views. And a chance to win GCash Loads.